I'm going to show you how to make, uh, how to use SketchUp to make a three view drawing, which is basically a two dimensional drawing, which is not what SketchUp is really made for, but it'll work pretty good for what we want to do, and it's free. And um, the other part that we kind of need to do it is also free. So here's what it looks like we have a, a 3D object that we're actually measuring, or we have a, a, a drawing like this that we're starting from. And a three view looks like this. I, I just Googled for both of these images. You'll probably come up with the same ones if you Google three view. And uh, they all pretty much look the same. There's a front view here, a top view here, and a right view here. And if you look at it, you probably would recognize that uh, the reason why we do it in this orientation is because these lines actually extend right up there to the other lines. And the drawing kind of makes itself after a while. If you have this drawing, uh, kind of projecting its way down on top of this one and this one projecting its way across. This drawing is pretty much already made by the time you get to it. I'll show you how that works. In SketchUp, the first thing I would do, I have SketchUp Pro, but uh, I think it would be the same for SketchUp Free. The way I would do it is just, you know, open a new document. I'd probably get rid of this young lady. And then I'd go to Camera, Standard Views, Top. So that'll put me looking down basically on a sheet of paper. And if I choose, um, well, let's do this. I'm going to move it over so I, I've got the, uh, the origin over to my lower left. And what you'll see is immediately we can notice that the blue axis, which normally goes straight up to the sky and down to the ground, is showing up in perspective. So that's a problem. I can choose instead parallel projection, and now it's pointing straight up at me. So this is really like using SketchUp for 2D. I'm just looking down on a sheet of paper at this point. I can go to Window and hit Styles, <clears throat> edit the current style, and uh, change the background, if I wanted to, to white. So now it really looks like I'm looking on at paper. I don't need a sky either. OK, so uh, the, the next thing to do is start drawing. I'm going to, let's see if I have it open here. No. I'm going to just open a, a model that I have here. Let's go with this. This is the model I'm working from. So let's pretend I have an actual object in my hand that looks like this. Uh, I, which side is the front is maybe you could say is kind of arbitrary. And usually it's the side with um, the most detail, I think. But we're, we're basically, um, we're going to assume that, uh, <laughs> hold on, I got myself in a weird position. There we go. I'm going to make this the front. And you see there's a hole going through the top. So th those are really all the features that I need to, to, to see. The whole point of a three view, drawing a three view, is so that uh, in one drawing, this drawing, we could hand this over to a, a machinist or um, we could show someone who's going to help us figure out how to make this thing. And this drawing would have everything we need. This one, maybe not so much, because we can't really see what's happening on the other side. We don't know if maybe there's a, a hole coming through the other side of this piece that doesn't actually make its way all the way through. We'd never know. With the three view, we can find all that information. So with this 3D model, I can also find all the information. But um, what we want is just a paper drawing, basically. So I'm going to start over here in my, in my blank screen. <clears throat> I'm going to start drawing this thing. I'm just going to do this quickly. Uh, I'll say this is probably four inches in height. I'm obviously at a, a weird scale, so I'll kind of move it over. And uh, I think it's four inches going across. It's a cube, basically. So four inches down, four inches over. Now, I'm not interested in having uh, faces at all, so I'm going to click on this face and just hit Delete. I'm only interested in the edges. This is just like I was drawing, if I was drawing on paper. So that's what the front looks like. Um, I think maybe this, uh, and, and I can use guides at any time to make this a little bit easier. I think this uh, that notch is probably half an inch over, and it probably goes up about an inch, and it's probably half an inch in width. I wouldn't be guessing at these things. Obviously, I'd be I'd be uh, measuring the actual object, and then over here, this this notch seems to go like this. And I think the easiest way to make that happen is, again, to use construction lines and say this should be 45 degrees over. So at this point, I can just start filling in all of the parts of the, um, of the model. 
just based on the construction lines. Now I've got too much here because this is supposed to be uh, hollow, so I'll just delete that line. So now the line continues around here in a loop. And um, right now I'd probably say I don't, I don't need these, which is not really true because if you look at the front view of this, if you were looking at this dead on with no perspective, this would just look like a, a diagonal line. And that's really what we want to do is, is show the front of this thing. So that line belongs there. Again, I'm, I'm not interested in the faces, so maybe I'll just stop here. So that's pretty much it right now. The only difference is that we can't see the hole in the top. And I'll get to that in one second. So where we go from here, I, I, I'm going to say for now that we're pretty much done with this, um, this front face. And I'm going to start drawing up here the, um, the next face, So I will, which is the top. I will just make this 4x4 four four because I know it is. I could also do, well, I can show you this. I could also use um, this feature of SketchUp, which you can see a little kind of string that's attaching, attaching my cursor to that point that I started on. And this is called um, inference locking. And uh, so, so we can use that as a way to make sure that we're starting in the right place. This is the whole point of a three view. It kind of uh, projects from the bottom drawing up onto the top one. We'll see more of this in a second. I could also just type the measurements. There we go. Now, I, I can see here that this uh, notch is actually supposed to go all the way through this thing. And the drawing is already almost doing what I want, which is to have a, a dotted line that shows this channel going through. We don't see an actual line because if we were looking at the top of this object, it would just look pretty much flat. So what I really like here is dotted lines. SketchUp, unfortunately, can only uh, make solid lines. So I think this is the point where I would, and I'm just going to get rid of the construction lines so you can see. Um, this is the point where I'd start looking at uh, some plugins that allow us to make uh, dotted lines. So let me go ahead and show you a plugin that does that. You can go to sketchuptips.blogspot.com and this guy Jim has a bunch of plugins. If we scroll down a bit, we can see uh, somewhere in here, he's got a link to my SketchUp plugins. And there's there are a bunch of great ones here, but this one is the one we're interested in, construction line tool. There's a bunch of ways you could do this, but I, I, what I found is this is the easiest. So this, once we install this plugin, we'll see that we have an extra um, drawing tool, basically, one that allows us to make dotted lines. And that, that's going to be good enough for what we need to do right now. The way that we install plugins is pretty simple. I'll show you right now. Um, here is the download link. I'll download his plugin. Okay, there it goes. And I will take a look at it in the finder. I actually downloaded it twice, but you'll, you'll end up with a, a zip file like this. And when you double click on it, it should open into a folder. If we look inside this folder, it contains two things. Both of those things need to go in our SketchUp plugins folder. Now, how do you find that? Well, you'd open your home folder and you may see a library folder here. If you're on Mountain Lion like I am, you won't be able to see libraries. It's hidden. So the trick is you go to the Go menu, hold down the Option key, and library appears. Once you're in the library folder, you go to Application Support, and you find Google SketchUp. And then you click on SketchUp. And you should have a plugins folder here. Mine is empty. You may not even have one. You can make it. Just make sure it's a capital P. There's no dashes, no spaces or anything. And there's an S at the end. Once you have that folder, you can just drag the contents of that zip file right in there. Now, I'm going to have to save this because you, a plugin won't show up in SketchUp until we restart SketchUp. So let's do that. Okay, we're back in SketchUp, and I'm going to, oh, I can see already I've got a new tool here. I'm going to open the drawing that I just had. And uh, the way you get to his particular drawing tool is to go to Draw Construction Lines, and that shows this tool is now selected. And what I can do is use this just like I would use the Line tool, and 
I can just do the same inference locking thing where I start from here and go up to the edge. Do the same thing here. And there we go. So this is all of these techniques are the same things we would do on paper with pencil and probably a T-square and a triangle. And SketchUp is just making it easier for us by giving us these, these little features. So that's pretty much it there. Uh, of course, this notch, if we look at the original model, only goes halfway in. So how do I draw that? Well, I'd start here, and I'd probably go only to the midpoint. And there we go. So this is showing basically um, what's happening here. So the, the top of the model is actually here. We don't see any notches, but we can tell here that the notch actually goes all the way to the middle of the, of the model. So we're, we're pretty good so far. The last feature, and I'm kind of reluctant to do it because I'm running uh, out of time here, but uh, it's a, a one inch hole that goes through the center of the model, one inch diameter, which means half an inch radius. And uh, I can, I can uh, show that, so, okay, this works. <laughs> There we go. But now I need to show that hole going through the front face. Even though I can't see it, there is a hole going through. And we know now that we use dotted lines for that. So I'll go back to Jim's tool. And starting from here, I will draw that dotted hole going all the way through. Same here. OK, I think these two faces are perfect. Now, this is where it gets interesting. We want to draw that last right face, and the way that we can do that is to use this tool to make a construction line that goes 45 degrees off in the distance. I'm going to use a lot of construction lines here because it makes things a lot easier. I will make a construction line for all of the interesting features of this face. Uh, I'll include the top of the circle, or the hole, and the, top, the bottom of the hole. I'll also come over here and do the same well, what I'll do is extend these lines downward now. So I'm just making verticals that match up all those with all those points. And then the last thing I'll do is make horizontal lines here that match all of the interesting features of the model. OK, that might be it. So if, it, if it's not obvious, it's kind of, oh, I have one more. There we go. If it's not obvious, it's kind of already made a ghost of the model. Let's try drawing it. Here's the right side. We know that it's 4 by 4 by 4. And get rid of that because I don't need it. What else can I see from the right side? Well, I can see this corner. If we look at the model, this is the right side right here. So all I really see from this side is this notch. So let's draw that in uh, solid pencil. It goes all the way to the halfway point of the model. How do I know that's the line? Well, if I trace it back up, you can see that's actually the notch. So it just projects right down to this one. There we go. Um, now we have some dotted lines to deal with. This is a little bit of a, it's kind of, it's kind of an interesting model because there are some overlapping lines. So there should be actually a line that goes all the way, a dotted line that goes all the way over here. I'm going to get rid of these construction lines at this point. Uh, there's some confusion when you're drawing dotted lines with Jim's plugin and when you have actual construction lines because they look the same. But I'll, what I'll do is I'll draw this uh, circle, the, the hole that goes through the whole thing. Draw that. And I'll actually draw the rectangular notch that goes through the whole thing. Those are dotted lines. So now I'll go through and just start wiping out all of my construction lines and see what I'm left with. OK, there we go. Believe it or not, this is all the information we would need, really. Um, what we do need is, and you know, this may look confusing because there's a solid line over a dotted line, but given all of the other features, uh, all of the other views here, we would be able to explain the entire model just with these three drawings. So whatever's left out here uh, is filled in here. For example, we can see this channel goes all the way through. How do we know it's not a hole? Well, over here it shows it as a rectangle. So all the information is here. 
the last thing you'd need to do is start making some dimensions on the drawing. So SketchUp has a tool for this too. You'd click and drag. Ideally, you know, I'm, I'm just showing you a quick version of this, but ideally you would have uh, <clears throat> this dimension come out a specific distance. And ideally, you would, you would maybe do some research into how these dimensions uh, usually look in, in these kinds of drawings. The, um, the, the point is that we don't want to have any dimensions that are redundant. So what I'd probably do is uh, I could take each one of these features on the bottom of the front view and start dragging them out as uh, dimensions. So what's the distance from there to there? What's the distance from here to here? Well, the way I can do that is to just drag like that. So it figures some of that stuff out for us. Um, then I probably want to also uh, show these dimensions. So if you can see, I'm, I'm drawing all the dimensions on the outside of the drawing, not uh, in between them. That's maybe another thing to consider. And you know, you might say, well, this is three plus one. We don't really need this four over here. I think right for right now, it's probably not a big deal uh, how you do this, but obviously uh, there's some specific techniques. And I think, I think even here we might say, well, what's the distance from there to the edge of the hole? And this is the last thing I want to show you. We don't normally, when we're talking about holes, we don't normally go by the edges of the hole. We normally talk about a center line that runs through it. So uh, what, we, what we'd like to do is show that this is a, a hole. And the way that we do that normally is with a center line, which has a different, if we look back at our drawing, it has a different style to the line. You can't really see it here, but it's a small dot and then a long, a small dash and then a long dash repeated over and over. So we can see here, these lines are not actually showing that there's something in the back of this model. What they're showing is that these, this is the center of a, a drilled hole. I'd say for now, you know, maybe that's sufficient, um, but you could also just, you could also draw your own center line. So if I drew a line here that was sort of um, a a small dash and a long dash. And maybe I can tweak them a little bit to look a little better or worse. Uh, okay, and then what I could do if I was really interested in making this look like a proper three view is I could make this uh, into a group and repeat it or I could just copy and paste it. So now I have um, something that starts to look like a center line. So we'd have this line come all the way down, and then we'd probably make our dimensions go from the center line over to the next interesting feature. Um, this, you know, I'm kind of blowing past all of this stuff because this really has not much to do with SketchUp and how we're making the drawing. It has more to do with the actual, uh, actual technical drawing. So this information you could find in other places. The last thing I'll show you is that you could also show diameters, which is important. If you just had a curve here, you can also, uh, to show you, this is not in the model, but we'll pretend it is. Um, I can use this dimension feature to show a radius. So that shows that this is a one inch radius. So I think uh, that's all you'd need to know. And the nice thing about this is these, even though these are construction lines, the way Jim has created this tool, if you export it as a, a 2D graphic, they'll actually show up in there, which is perfect because now you could print it out and take it to your local machine shop and uh, hopefully it have enough information to, um, for them to actually produce it. So I think that's maybe all you need to know for now about SketchUp and how to do this, how to install a plugin. You should probably take a look into uh, technical drawing to understand more about how dimensions work and the different kinds of lines. You can have thick lines and thinner lines in a drawing, and that becomes important too to, distinction, uh, to make a distinction between what's in the front and what's in the back and so on. So uh, that's it. Good luck.